fulfill your free will, your higher self is always aware of the bigger picture and the prenatal contract and is going to trigger that response. Like, no, no, keep walking. Don't I'd like to welcome to the show, Caroline Corey. How you doing, Caroline? Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited to talk to you. Uh, you know, we, we were just talking before. We're both filmmakers. We both come from that side of the world, and we both are interested in this side of the world as far as spirituality and consciousness and quantum physics and how the whole world in the universe works. So, it, And we were just mentioning like how rare that is to find a kindred spirit who speaks the same languages in both both arenas. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, isn't that what life is about, you know? It's like, what is this reality about? So, you know, we're making films as a job, you know, as just a creative outlet, but uh, I like to go deep and say, what's the point of it? <laughs> exactly. And where is this going? So then that takes you down the rabbit hole. And <laughs> without, without question. So my first question to you, my dear, is, can you tell the audience what happened to you when you were five years old? There was an event, a little something, something that happened at that time in your life, kind of started you on this path. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So what happened was um, I was just there. I remember it was um, December 24th. Uh, I was five years old. And so, you know, my parents were just kind of messing around with the, the preparations for whatever the holidays and things. And uh, I looked around and I noticed that uh, humans or adult humans anyway, didn't know how to interact with each other. They kind of like there was I felt like there was no love. It was just talking and fussing and arguing and stuff. And so it was exactly at that moment where I was just thinking, you know, as a child, I don't feel love, you know, in this room. Exactly at that moment, I noticed this huge amount of light, those beings <laughs> that literally showed up. And, um, and I realized that I could see them, hear them, sense them. And we kind of were exchanging it, some sort of telepathic message. And they told me that we were kind of the same lineage and we were connected. We were gonna stay connected the rest of my human life. And they kind of showed me how they were kind of communicating, how they were exchanging energy. And uh, of course, I'm five years old, right? <laughs> sure. they, you know, it kind of, it, it was very organic. It was spontaneous and it felt amazing. So I just went with it. And they said, if you want to maintain this communication, you have to ask for it. And I, th and I was thinking, what do you, like, who do I ask? And they said, just look at what your brain is doing right now and ask for that to happen again. So I realized I was concentrating on a thought, an intention. I want this to happen again the rest of my life. And basically they were teaching me about intention. That's all it was. And so, so since that time, and then they just kind of left. And so since that time, I realized that, wait, uh, in the beginning, I thought, oh, you know, all kids do that. There's nothing special about this, nothing special about me or anything. But it was later as I grew up that I realized, like, no, wait, <laughs> not everybody necessarily can see the subtle energy because I was literally seeing the subtle energy, not just the beings, but the space between me and them. I was seeing codes, I was seeing all kinds of stuff. And that's how I started asking the question, wait a minute, like how did this happen? How, what's the mechanics of all of this? And that's how I got into the field of consciousness for 20 years and asking these questions and going deep into how can I make this happen again consciously? So can you tell the audience in your own words, what do you, what are you doing? What's the work that you're doing? So, so that I spent 20 years 
really trying to understand the science of consciousness, how it all works. I developed methodologies uh, for meditation, for communication, for healing. And eventually I started working with scientists uh, because there was so much validation. Whatever I was teaching, whatever we were doing would actually happen, would manifest. So I started working with scientists to validate this work. And um, because we were getting such incredible results, for example, focusing on the water to change the pH and it would change. Now we're talking about scientific settings, right? Um, telekinesis or what have you, we would have actual measurable results that after a while I said, wait a minute, we need to put this out in the world. And that's how I started making films uh, because I felt that in the world of film, as you know, I mean, there's a lot of material out there, but what I wanted to do is bring that scientific angle to bring measurable validation. You know, we hear about your mind affects your reality, affects your body, your stress level, meditation is good for you. We know that, but I wanna show how <laughs> and why. And that's how I started making these films, uh, Superhuman, Tear in the Sky. I mean, I have a few films on different subjects in the same area. So how do you define consciousness? Because that's always a, you know, everyone has a kind of different, but from your point of view, what is the definition of consciousness? Yeah, so scientists think that consciousness is just the act of being conscious. To me, consciousness is more the fundamental substance from which all of life emerges, meaning it is an energy. And from that energy, you are going to have the physical world emerge, intelligent life, uh, the planets, the universe, physical and non-physical life emerges from that one same substance. And so because of that, it's almost like there's a common denominator for all of existence, all aspects of existence. And that's the reason why when you hear people talk about we are connected, we are literally connected because every that energy that substance consciousness is within our cells if it's in my cell and your cell then we have that commonality so to me that's what consciousness is so let's because these are we're, we're dancing around some rabbit holes here that we're going to go down in a minute uh, because if you start start asking these kind of questions it inevitably goes to to certain uh, certain areas that you can go deep into. So the first deep rabbit hole we're going to fall into is uh, simulation theory, which is something that we've I've had on the show. I've had Tom Tom Campbell on uh, on the show, and uh, who's fascinating. Just yeah. <laughs> uh, just literally, that interview was two hours long. I just could keep talking to him forever. He's fascinating. Um, but can you explain to people what simulation theory is for people who don't know what it is, and then let's start digging into it a little bit so it's the idea that we live inside some sort of matrix some giant computer that's predetermined and so so everything that we are seeing is just a reflection it's an illusion it's not even real and so that that's kind of in general the gist of what simulation theory is but yeah well, so then so then if you were saying that we're all connected and there's this energy. Could you replace the word energy for code, DNA even? DNA is a little bit of a difference, but a code that is a language that we all can connect to. And that's why we all, we're all kind of made of the same stuff. And there is consciousness is the energy that brings it all kind of together because without consciousness, this body is just a meat suit, essentially a bunch of atoms that just wouldn't have even come together without some form of consciousness and let alone run for as many years as I've been alive and, and hopefully for many more. Yeah. So, so consciousness is not code to me Okay. Uh, from consciousness emerges code. Okay. I mean, you have to keep thinking if there is such a thing as before and after uh, consciousness is before anything, it's infinity itself mm. from infinity, then life gets created. So it's a, it's it's an it's an awareness that 
that it's standing behind. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I'm trying, just trying to. Again, these are difficult questions. This is not easy stuff to talk to. <laughs> We're talking about the, the starting the, off with them. <laughs> but like, so there's there's us. So we, we see, we act, we interact. But there's something behind us that is kind of seeing farther along, seeing a bigger picture than we are, which could be argued as the soul, higher self, some sort of uh, connected spiritual entity or, or, or being. Is that a fair kind of where we're going? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> so again, uh, consciousness, it, you can, I, I use the word substance or energy, but it's something. I mean, we have to call it something, you know? Mm -hmm. And from that, you're going to have your higher self, you're going to have your physical body. So it's really before anything at all, like before anything could ever exist. Got it. It's so before if, existence. Think if there was, that. if there's a before and an yeah. after, which then your head, your head starts to hurt yeah. a little bit. <laughs> exactly. We're totally down the rabbit hole now. <laughs> <laughs> because right. of course, of course, in the, 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 the source energy, God energy, uh, there is no before and after, which we can't comprehend because the, exactly. the, the universe was there before and will be there after, or it never had a beginning or after. So it's just always been, that is a concept that, uh, you know, spiritual masters throughout the years <laughs> have tried to explain, and it's extremely difficult for us to comprehend in this physical realm, right? Exactly. So, I mean, I think maybe the closest word could be infinity. What, how do you grab on infinity? Like, what it, as soon as you start to explain it, you're making it finite. So, it's right. a little bit like that, you know? So, so consciousness is, is, like infinity it's it just is and from that as soon as you start describing okay so here's my body and i'm aware and yeah. that's it you're, you're already past you know you, you're already part of the uh, one aspect of consciousness so so what is the quant what is quantum reality so <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> i told you we're gonna yeah. go deep <laughs> very very deep okay so so again, going back to maybe the simulation theory. So everything exists on a, in a quantum state and in a physical manifested state, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so, so the quantum signature of things, it's kind of like the energy or the, the probability of right. something existing uh, happens before it exists. So it's a state of being that allows all probability to be. And then here comes you as a one unit of consciousness. You're an intelligent uh, being, creative being, right? And so you are one form, one type, one way that consciousness expresses itself. So you are this one unit of consciousness and you are in this pool of probability, future probability. So the minute you put your focus on this outer reality, this the world of probability, and you say, I want this or I want whatever, then that interaction triggers a chain of reaction that, that is energetic, is we're still at a quantum level, that eventually precipitates a manifestation in your physical reality. So, so. <laughs> okay, so let me unpack that for a little bit. So the and and, I'm, and, I, and a lot of times when I bring on people talking in in science language, I try to bring in the spiritual language to kind of sure. translate it a little bit. So we from from a spiritual standpoint, we um, at least from my spiritual studies and people I've had on the show before, we plan our our lives ahead of time. We come down. We we go through. Um, through different adventures, uh, different uh, obstacles, the things to learn along the way to grow and evolve as a spiritual soul. While we're down here, we have free choice, which is a big, big, big issue with when people talk like you're talking, they're like, well, wait a minute, we have good free choice. We do have free choice. We always have free choice. But the chances of me walking along a street and then, oh, I'm going to go burn that tree down. Would I do that? Uh, absolutely. I could go there, set, up, set it on fire and watch it burn. The chances, the probability of me doing that is not 
going to happen. More than likely, I'm going to keep walking. You know, I'm not going to kick the dog that's sitting there. Probably just going to pet him and move along. So there's always different, you know, opportunities for anyone to do anything. How many how many times have I don't know if you've ever done this. This is a guy thing. You've just sit there talking to somebody. I did this when I was younger. And I just think like, you know what? If I just clocked him in the face, he would never see it coming. <laughs> 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 like when you're a teen, That's like, so you, you know, it's like, you're like you're, I'm just talking to this person. I'm like, you know, if I just, just clocked him in the face, he would never see it coming. Could I do that? Absolutely. Probability, not so much, but, hmm. but the potential always is there. So that's kind of where, where if I, if, if I'm, correct and kind of translating what you're saying, it more likely will go in a certain direction. Does it sometimes go in another direction? Sure, because we do have free choice. And there are things that you could at any moment just change your mind. I could turn this interview off right now. You know, we could, you know, you, know, you could just run around the room and these are things we could do, but chances are we're not going to do. Is that fair? You will never do that. To <laughs> I would never. <laughs> Loving this conversation. No, no, but it's true. But to me, um, I feel that uh, there's two things happening here. Before you incarnate, you come in with what I call a prenatal contract. You don't, Because creation is purposeful. I mean, look at every single cell in your body has a purpose. There's not one thing that doesn't do something. So, so kind of as a base concept, if you will, ingrained with existence, creation is a is purposeful. So you come in, you create, you say, okay, I'm going to come down to planet Earth as Alex, and um, I'm going to do all that stuff. So it's a, it's a creative uh, thought and idea and, and plan. And so because of that, you have some sort of goal, you have a contract, you said, I'm going to go down and I'm going to help people awaken, I'm going to be creative, I'm going to make films or what have you. But it's also a bigger picture. It's more, how do I contribute to the evolution of my consciousness and to the collective consciousness? Because as soon as I come in as a human, automatically I am contributing and I'm affecting the collective consciousness. So you come in with this you know pre-plan if you will but of course when you're down here the idea for you in order for you to be in the moment and to create from a place of authenticity then you don't you're not always remembering your prenatal contract you're in the moment and this is where you still have free choice so you say free will and so at one point in your career, when you were younger or what have you, you had a choice. Do I take these drugs? Do I get into the alcohol and whatever or not? You know, my friends are doing it. What should I do? You still mm -hmm. have free will. So somewhere in the back of your mind, um, you have the, the remembrance of your prenatal contract that tells you, wait, you're, you're here to do spiritual awakening, help people awaken spiritually. So if you go down this on this road, you're probably not going to achieve what you said you're going to achieve. So something within you, you know, feels wrong about making that choice. So even though it's still your free will, your higher self is always aware of the bigger picture and the prenatal contract. And it's going to trigger that response. Like, no, no, keep walking. Don't burn down that tree. Don't right. take that drug. Don't dig, go down this road, whatever. So that you remain on that path and you fulfill that contract that you set out for yourself. And I've, I've had, I've had a lot of near death experiences on the show. And, and I, I spoke to one once they said, I lost my way. And mm. I was then brought into a near-death experience. And then they told me, you are not doing what you're supposed to do. And then if you don't, we're going to, you're just going to stay. And we're going to have to redo this all over again. Kind of like you went off the, you went off the trail. Yeah. And then she's like, no, if you, if we send you back, you got to do this now. If you don't do this, we're, we're pulling you out of the game. <laughs> Essentially. Exactly. Yeah, and I see a lot. I work with a lot of people because I can communicate, you know, mm -hmm. uh, who are in a coma mm -hmm. and uh, or Alzheimer, like they're not here, they're somewhere else, they're halfway here. Have Same with near death. So here you have an opportunity to stop what you're doing, to step out and to reevaluate. And most of the time, it's exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. And they have the choice because they went so off track 
And what happens is that there is no such thing as karma, like punishment, like, hey, like you said right. you're going to do something and you didn't, therefore you have to be punished. It's not about that. It's about you. You are the one that said, my consciousness wants to do this to evolve to the next level of consciousness on this earth or on Mars or whatever, you know, whatever life or whatever experience I will have in the future. So it's kind of like, this is what you said you're going to do. You bring all the tools, all the, you know, all, all the experiences that you need. But if you don't end up doing it, it's almost like you have all this baggage and then you have to exit, you have to leave because it's, oh, you're already 65 or whatever, or, you know, you're getting old and it's, you're running out of time. So it's all your stuff. And, and so, so, it's, so it's almost like you've accumulated added homework that you could, you know, that you couldn't finish. And so even you leave this body, it's still you, it's like attached to you. And I, unfortunately, I see this also with people who commit suicide, which mm -hmm. is very sad because they think that by committing suicide, uh, they are resolving, like they, they're stopping whatever problem they're, they're struggling with. But guess what? I see like where they're going and the same problem continues with the mental torture with everything else because it's the consciousness experience experience that you're taking with you so that's the reason why the faster you get with the program that you set out for yourself the faster you're going to graduate but isn't and it then, also but isn't it also easier too when you're walking the path that you're supposed to be on, doors open, opportunities present themselves. You meet the right person who gives you the right door opening, this or that. I've just noticed that in my own life. When I struggle to go against the grain, I just kept running into walls. So when you are running into walls again and again and again and again, it seems to be like something is telling you maybe you should go over here. And I use the show as an example. I came over here, and when I started doing this show, doors swung open in ways that have never been open to me before. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this is what it's like to just go with the flow, go with the river. And, and, and play. so I use the analogy of video game play for this conversation to really, really simplify it, that the, the consciousness is the player outside of the video game. The game itself is a simulation and the player is who we are. We are avatars essentially the avatar yeah and we're learning how to play the game so we walk down we walk down and don't turn that corner because there's a monster there well one life and literally it's called a life they go hey, what's in this door i'm gonna go check it out you walk in you're killed by the monster shoot start again walk right. down that same path but like ah, you know what i'm not gonna go into that door because that's i know where the monster is because i was here last time and now you so then you start you start evolving and playing that's so is that a fair analogy to what we're kind of talking about totally totally and then you uh being the player the consciousness you are also guided by your bigger consciousness because that's one, another thing that happened in um, in that five-year-old experience that I had when I was five. I was telling you, so what? one very important realization is that it's as if I was on this side of the veil in physical form and they were my extension, so to speak, like my lineage in non-physical form, in spirit form. So it's kind of like that connection is never severed. Right. And that line of communication is never severed. So even though I was here as a child in this human body, that information, they kept feeding me information from the other side just because that's the process, not because you're psychic or whatever, whatever. It's, it, that's the way it works. So the, your higher self is constantly reminding you of the path, if that makes sense. And that could be also interpreted as intuition too. Intuition is telling you, Yes, no, kind of guiding you, your gut instinct, pushing you in certain directions. Uh, because, I mean, I've, I've, I think everybody has felt the gut instinct at one point in their life or another. Like, oh, this is not the right person. I don't really shouldn't date this person or I really shouldn't take that job or maybe. I, you know, and, and you feel you feel it. But a lot of times the ego gets in the way and stops you from listening to your intuition. But the closer you are to your higher self, the closer you are to who you truly are that that communication seems a lot 
easier. That's why meditation is so powerful. When you meditate, you are connecting yourself more and more into the code, if you will, into the into the where that language is able to connect to. That's why uh, so many um, meditators are able to just feel things out a lot easier than people who are stuck there. I think they're closer to the other side than they are to this side. In other words, this side is very dense, very, you know, you know, very, um, you know, there's a lot of temptations. There's a lot of, but as you meditate and you start getting into closer to who you truly are, all that stuff kind of falls away. And you're just like, I don't really care about the huge TV. My TV is fine. I might not even need a TV. Uh, you know, ba the basic things become a little bit more important to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And so I think it's it's very confusing when we come down here, you know, as a as a human. First of all, our parents are in the same boat. Like we think they're going to educate us and tell us about spirit and consciousness. They don't know and their parents didn't know. So you already arrive in this environment that doesn't help you. Uh, that doesn't make sense, really, that doesn't tell you why you're having uh, these experiences, why you're feeling this way, why you are seeing imaginary friends or whatever. And so uh, you don't know how to process your emotions. You don't understand that your emotions are your guidance system and so on and so forth. And so already you are in a very confusing environment and you observe people around you, including your parents, who are suffering and struggling. So you start creating belief system that, you know, life is not so easy and it's confusing and nobody knows what's going on. So you grow up with, you know, you create belief system that keep you more and more in that confusion. Uh, until, but but this all this time, your higher self, as we were saying, is still sending you messages. You still feel like your gut feeling like what you're saying is the truth, but you don't know how to go there. You, you, nobody teaches you these things, certainly not in school. In school, it's like the grades and where you're gonna be and how you're gonna blah, blah, blah. And so, um, so I think that's why at some point, the two are in such conflict, your inner gut feeling, your true heart, the truth, your truth, and what you're being told and what you're observing on the outside, they're in constant conflict until one point you hit a wall and then your higher self, you know, wants to bring you back on the right path. So it's, it's, it's exactly what you said. And we think we have like some sort of crisis or whatever. Um, but, but really the only way to do that, to navigate through all this confusion is through meditation because you gotta, you gotta quiet. You're like, you gotta shut out, you know, shut off all this outer, you know, information that's confusing you in order for you to only listen to your inner truth. And sometimes you hit a wall and sometimes the wall hits you. Uh, <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> sometimes you're so stubborn that the wall's like, oh, he's not listening or she's not listening. We're going to have to throw the wall on top of her. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's when you have an event in life that stops and you've got to, and there was a kind of big giant reset for everybody during the pandemic. The entire planet stopped. And everybody just took, wait, wait a minute, why am I doing this? And it was fascinating to watch what has happened to that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later as far as the evolution of the entire species. Again, small, small questions. Um, <laughs> so I love it. So we were talking a little bit about um, programming, and I'm fascinated with this stuff. I've had uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton on uh, talking about uh, subconscious and the programming we get from our parents, which you could argue is, you, you ask for it. You ask for these parents to teach you these lessons, to program you the way. So these are the struggles you have to go through in order to evolve. But can we, so now if we're, if we're sitting here listening to this conversation and going, okay, I've got some limiting beliefs, or I think I have some limiting beliefs that are stopping me from moving forward. What can we do to start to reprogram ourselves in a positive way to go to the direction we are? Because that subconscious programming of those first seven years, it is powerful. It is because it, it's so it's it's sitting on your shoulder all the time and you don't even know it's there. It's really, really powerful. So what can we do? Yeah, for sure. So um, what happened, I just wanted to also remember, I always go back to that experience because when I was five is I was saying that I saw the subtle energy 
and what is the subtle energy? It's, it's actually information, meaning when I said I would see the structure of space between me and you, like I would see how it was made, the geometry, or whatever, but it was information. It's as if it was telling me, it was describing to me what it was, how it was made. And so as I started working with people, and you know one person is stuck you know in their relationship and one person in their finances and the, it's the physical health or what have you uh, i realized that when i would look at them i could read the information and that where they were blocked and as you just said it's all in the subconscious mind so as i was following this trajectory okay how did i get today to at the age, I don't know, 34 or whatever, you know, whatever, to, to believe and to be convinced that I'm a failure. How right. did that happen? You didn't come in thinking you're a failure. Yeah, I think you came in thinking, woohoo, I'm here, give me food, give me love, give me, you know, give me joy. You didn't come in thinking I'm a failure. And so as you trace this back to the root cause, you know, in your subconscious mind, you are observing the physical reality around you. Uh, you are observing your parents perhaps fight or the father who leaves at an early age and never comes back, for example, or the mother. And so you start to have feelings as you are observing this, this reality around you. Wait, my father left, my mother left, um, therefore I'm not good enough. <laughs> I'm not good enough. If, they, if I was good enough, they'd be here. That's the first time through your feelings, you create the first belief system. So you create it through your thought. We think thoughts are invisible, therefore they don't exist. Like where are thoughts? Like where are they? But actually it's an actual frequency and it's an actual form. I mean, I can mm -hmm. literally see the thought. Like I could see it's a cluster of energy. That's what it is. And so as you are thinking and you're, you are emitting this cluster of energy, where do you think it goes? It, it, it doesn't just like dissolve in thin air around you. It goes, it stays within you in your cells. You're kind of literally pouring information, clusters of energy inside your cells. If you happen to have a predisposition, maybe for because of genetics or whatever, um, in your stomach or in your liver or in your heart, that's exactly where it's going to go. If it's so, negative, if it's negative, it's, yeah, because it's a frequency. So the cell is supposed to vibrate between seven hundred thirty-four and a thousand hertz. It's supposed to be rotating at a certain speed in order to maintain the chemistry, the electricity, the functioning, the proper functioning. Everything has a so when you add another cluster of energy that has a lower frequency, same as our food, so the same as a, you know, alcohol, or what have you, let's say that thought cluster equals 150 hertz. So now you're adding to your cell a lower frequency. And then you're going to do it again, of course, because you're going to go to school. Now you have a new belief system. I'm, I'm amazing and I'm beautiful, but I'm also not good enough. So I'm going to go out in school and I'm going to create another experience that proves to me that I'm not good enough. And you see, my friend just left me. Now he's not friends with me. He's friends with this other guy. Ah, see, I'm not good enough. Add more <laughs> that same frequency over and over to those cells. Fast forward 20 years, you're in your, you know, you're a teenager. You've convinced yourself you're not good enough. That's it, you know, for sure. And then you get on in, in, into a relationship, try to get a job. Of course, you're not gonna get it because you're not good enough. So, so long story short, this is all the subconscious mind. We store all of this information. So, so now when you have a problem and you're trying to resolve, so, so going back to programming, basically you programmed yourself to believe that you're not good enough. But the good news is if you did that to yourself, then you can do it to yourself again. And so when I'm working with someone and I see that cluster, that information, I'm not good enough. And I go back to the very first time that this happened when they were three years old and the father and mother blah, 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 did that. And then the mother left and so on. So on. Ah, go back to the very first time 
you emitted that first thought, that first belief system, and reprogram it, deprogram it. So it's kind of like a, 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 when you take something uh, at the root, you, you, you take out the root, then it's like a domino effect. This entire um, added energy that you're accumulated on top of the same thing starts to crumble, you see. So that's how you can reprogram very efficiently and fast something that you're struggling with right now. So, of course, I can see the cell energy. I can tell you what's going on. But when you're doing this to yourself, you're like, wait, how am I going to know? Is it at age three or age four or whatever? The best thing, I mean, it's a whole methodology, really. Mm -hmm. But if you really, really, really sit with it, anybody can do this. And so basically, pick one topic that you're struggling with right now. Not 10, just the biggest one, the most important one. And as you start to quiet down, do a meditation, I like the meditation, of course, that I created connecting to source because it just really realigns you in this perfect vibration and this alignment, your brain channels are perfectly aligned. And so you go into that state and you go into your heart. And as you say, I am struggling with this problem. You know, I don't know why I'm still stuck in relationships. So you're going to feel things. All you do is reverse that feeling. Every time you feel, for example, I feel sadness that I'm still where I'm at, you know, and I'm at my age. Okay, I ask and intend to release my feeling of sadness and the belief that I'm still where I'm at at my age and I can't get whatever. So I'm releasing it from my cells, my cells. If you're not sure where in the body, just say every cell in the body. But sometimes you're going to feel it. Sometimes you're going to feel it in the stomach. You're going to feel it in the shoulders. You're, you're going to feel it. Sometimes it's in the brain. If you don't feel it, just say it. I'm asking to release this programming from every cell in my body. Breathe in. As you exhale, you imagine those clusters coming out of you. You mm -hmm. literally can start feeling these things. You know, you really have to concentrate. You start to feel something left you. And then you focus again. What am I feeling now? Um, I feel like nobody loves me, for example, whatever. You know, where do I feel it? I ask and intend to release the programming, the belief that nobody loves me from every cell in my body. Breathe in, breathe out, expel, expel, expel. If you do that, you will get to the root cause, to the very first time. People who are sensitive will actually see like a video. They will all of a sudden, they'll see the mother kind of in their field, doing something, saying something. It's gonna trigger that memory of the very first time. And when you find the very first time, you say, I ask to release this feeling of being not worthy at the age of three from every cell in my body, my conscious, subconscious, cellular memory, you breathe in, exhale it, same thing, purge. You basically now have undone this entire programming. I mean, of course I'm summarizing now. Sure, of course. It, but it's just in general, this is how you kind of reprogram yourself. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you so much for that, uh, that little, peek into the process and hopefully that can help somebody. But I've seen some, I've seen stuff with people I've known that <clears throat> it seems to me that you are building your own reality. You are building everything that your, your mind is literally constructing what's in front of you uh, and what happens to you. So I, I've watched it from a distance where friends who just, Oh, I, I, I hate where I'm at in life. I don't like my job. And they just, it just keeps piling onto them and piling onto them and piling onto them. And I see them struggle and then they get into a car accident and they're like, I got, now I got to, I lose my insurance and now I can't get to my job and my, I lose my job. And oh my, my girlfriend left me and it, and it just keeps piling and piling and piling and piling on. And it happened to me early in my life too. I had a, a moment in time where I reached bottom. It was almost going bankrupt. It was as bottom as I, I, as I had gotten in my life. So I kind of just said, I, I, it was so fascinating too. When I got to that place, I literally yelled out to God and I wasn't 
particularly spiritual at that point, but I just said, hey, I'm going to sign these papers of bankruptcy. And if you don't help me, I'm going to sign them because I have to help. I have to protect myself. So I'm more than willing to work this off, but I need help. And the next day I got a phone call. Yes. Yes. From, from my first boss in the business where they said, hey, there's an editor they need uh, up in this, this wherever. And I went up there and I got the job and started to build out my credit again, started to pay off my bills. Then I got another job. So that was working two jobs where before I couldn't even, I couldn't even get arrested, it, it, but it was just a switch of that, that mindset. And it, and it just, it just, and it, and it explained that I opened up my own business and, and went and just it took off from there. And I never see, I've never looked back. Uh, and by the way, it hasn't been smooth sailing the entire time, but generally speaking, I was going in the right direction. <laughs> A couple yeah. of walls, a couple of walls were thrown at me, a couple of boulders along the way. But generally speaking, that was the, the moments. And, and that's something I think we really need to tell people listening that you are creating the world around you. And I know it's hard to hear that when you're in, in the crap, when you're in the crap, it's like, uh, you don't want to believe that this is change your mind, do what, what Caroline just said and start to release a lot of these programming because you're there because of your programming. And and when I talked to Bruce on the show, he's he was talking about like rich, this is the why rich rich people stay rich, poor people stay poor. It is programming, subconscious programming. That that's why what is that? I don't even know the percentage. That's I think like 90%, 85% of people who win the lottery are either dead, in jail, or broke within five years. Yeah. That's pure programming of their situation yeah. isn't that amazing yeah absolutely i love what you just said but it's it's so true it's exactly it uh when you are in it you have a tendency to say why is god doing this to me punishing when, me if that's if that's the belief system or why is this happening to me like i haven't done anything like you know i'm, I'm innocent. Kind of innocent i'm innocent i'm innocent i'm innocent yeah like why is this happening to me and so it's very hard though when especially if you have allowed things to pile up for so long to kind of say wait a minute i did that to myself so it's true it is hard but you know think about like what you just said the fact that you did it then you could do it again i mean that's the good news you know, and so so that's that's kind of the idea. And before what, what you did, though, what you said, you said, God, help me or, you know, I just yelled out. I'm like, God, if you don't help me, you don't get me a job. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to sign this papers. I like yeah. I don't want to, but I need to unless you, yeah. uh, I'll work it off. I'm willing to pay my debts. I put so myself in this situation, but help me. Exactly. So what you did, you surrendered to the idea that you you're controlling, you have, you're creating, you you know what you're doing was all ego or whatever. And so when you said it's almost like you let go to the higher you, the higher Alex, you know, I mean, God, you know, in this sense, it's whoever knows the bigger story. I'm down here and help me out. And so that's what you did. And so that's why things shifted for you. It's the surrender that your truth starts from your higher consciousness just allow it to guide you if you allow yourself to listen it will if the flow through the heart not the thinking not the processing through the heart then your life will change for sure and to be and to be honest with you it happened again with this show oh. i didn't want i was scared of doing the show i didn't want to lose all the stuff i've done and and my other shows, I'm like, you know, I didn't want to come out of the spiritual closet, as if you will. Hmm. And I had the same conversation. It was around end of December of last year. And I said, okay, God, I'm all in. I'm, I, I, I surrender. That's a really, really key word to use here. Hmm. I surrender. I'm in your hands. Hmm. I'll do the work, but I'm going to, I'm just going to, and the second I said it, door started opening starts started opening i do more work so i'm like okay i'm on the train i gotta get it i gotta work and it just started opening up doors opening up doors to where we are today this is a fine line and it's a very interesting topic um where you are basically surrendering your free will 
to God's will, you know, but we have to be very careful <laughs> because then in certain religions, certain uh, belief systems, cultures anyway, it's almost like that turns into fate. And so we have, yeah. you know, where, where it's like, well, God wants me to do this. God wants me to do that. Agreed. And so that's why I said, that's why it's important. I think uh, the difference between you consciously saying, I know it's my will, but my free will is to align with my higher prenatal contract, not just some person that tells me what to do. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's and that's very empowering because it's almost like you're you're surrendering, you're trusting to yourself, your higher self, not something outside of you. And that's the difference. And I think that's what's beautiful about what you said. Well, I think that it's if if I may use another analogy, I love analogies because I'm a filmmaker, so I love painting a picture. <laughs> if you're on a train and you're an old, it's an old like you know coal train. You have to keep piling the coal into the engine to make it go where the train is going is being guided by a higher place. But mm. if you don't get up and put the coal in the engine, the engine doesn't go that higher, that higher place or that higher, uh, higher self guides you. It doesn't push you. It guides you. You still have to do the work. In other words, you can't wait sitting at home, watching Netflix, eating pizza and expect to be discovered as a singer or discovered as a writer or discovered as a scientist or no, no, you've got to do the work, but you have to trust that where you are heading is being guided by a higher, a higher place. And that could be in, and that would be your higher self aligning with that uh, prenatal contract that you call it or life contract or whatever you'd like to call it. Yeah, I love that. And it's also not just you have to do the work. You have, to me, the work is doing the asking, the intention. That's not it. so much the work like making phone calls and, you know, and also how you do the work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, aligning with uh, always every morning. It's so easy. Set your intention in the beginning of the day. That's what I do every single day. I mean, I've been doing this uh, for my whole life, people will say, well, why do you have to keep saying that? Why do you have to keep protecting yourself? What? Well, because you're in a physical world and you're in constant interaction with the physical world. You have to keep resetting, re you know. So in the beginning of, of each day, set your intention. My intention is to remain on my higher path, to fulfill this higher purpose. And so everything that comes into my experience, I ask to attract those experiences, those resources, this information to me, only those that are aligned with my higher path, letting go of everything else. This is so important, so, so important. So that then I go about my day, I know that the response I have for whatever email is the right one. And those that fell away, aren't you see so that's why how we do the work also is very important i'm not gonna call this guy just because he's somebody at a studio or whatever right. i'm not gonna go out i'm not gonna go out with this guy just because he can get me a role in a film i'm not gonna you see what i mean it's not just doing 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 it's how i'm doing that's mm. very very important that's a really great distinction. I'm glad you said that because you're right. If you, people might take that the wrong way and go, well, okay, I'll do this or that. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's it's how you do it as well. Now you talked about, um, I've heard you talk about positive and neg negative energy imprints, which I found fascinating, especially in your film, Superhuman, um, that we all kind of, you know, I, I always love talking, telling people I'm like, have you ever met somebody that when you're done, you feel like you got to take a shower? Yeah. <laughs> um, like you're like, I feel sleazy or you just run into somebody. I have somebody, uh, in my, uh, in my extended family that I, when I meet, when I, in, in the rare occasions, I see them every few years, I just can't, they've done nothing ever to me in my life ever, but their energy is so toxic to me that I just, I can't barely be around them. I just like, yeah. I can't, I can't even. And again, they've never said a negative word to me. They've never done an action negatively to me. It just is a weird, weird thing. And you run into people like that. And then you, on the other side, you also run into people that are like, oh my God, where have you been all my life? 
I, I completely connect with you. I feel like I've known you for a million years. Uh, and even if you don't have that relationship, you can feel positive energies. Like when I've spoken to spiritual masters on the show, you, you feel, even through Zoom, you feel something. You feel Definitely. like their presence. And I have been in, in presence of, of people like that in, in real life. And you just like, there's something about them. There's some energy about them. So can you talk a little bit about energy imprint and the power that it has over us? Yeah, exactly what we were saying earlier. When you have, you emit these thoughts, these aren't invisible things. These are frequencies. They're actually energy clusters that stay in your body and stay in your energy. So if you are somebody who's, you know, who, who has, who has accumulated belief system and thought clusters, uh, you are literally carrying all of this information in your body and in your energy. So it's all, I'm not good enough. It's about competition. It's about control or what have you, or I'm a damaged person, or I hate myself, you see? And so when you come in contact with this person, even though they could be saying, oh, I missed you. I love you, but you can feel <laughs> because you also have an energy. And so the two energies are interacting spontaneously because that's what energy does. So you are sensing the true energy behind what they're saying. And because that energy, again, it's about frequency, you know, you're supposed to be vibrating at 734 Hertz and up. And all of this information that they're bringing to you is at around 100, 150. Love so it's that. almost like you're bringing, it's bringing you down to that level. And you're like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. I just feel awful because of that. You know, and, and is that the and, reason why historically, when you hear stories of these yogis who are uh, at an ashram somewhere in India and their followers, like if you walk within 30 feet of them, you have this blissful feeling that you're like, I don't want to ever leave. They're literally feeding off of their positive energies of what they're able to do. I mean, and this is documented for thousands of years from different yogis and spiritual masters is that's basically the opposite end of that exactly and and what what you were saying also it's also even you can sense it through zoom so it's non-local you don't have to be walking within 10 feet of that person if you allow yourself to sense because it's it's non-local there is no such thing as time space when you talk about consciousness because it's again it's the fundamental substance it's everywhere and it's connecting us all so if you are open to the conversation with me then you're open you're open to my energy altogether and you can sense it in your field in fact that's how i do these uh, healing sessions i mean i have recorded sessions from like 10 years ago and people do it now and they get the same <laughs> you know the same whatever experience how does that work even though i i, I poured my imprint my energy in that session 10 years ago but when you come across it 10 years later it's not about the words it's about the energy the consciousness behind the words that are imprinted there that's so amazing that's it, 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 mind-boggling and it's so it, and it's so so important to live um in that level of awareness it's actually very simple i mean you go you don't even have to meet a person that brings you down you go into a store i mean go into best buy with all the you know uh, go into i mean not to i'm not saying it's a bad store I mean, but you know we were talking about no no yeah like and yeah, there's you know, like, like stuff yeah, all yeah, over yeah, the place yeah, electronics yeah yeah and same thing with cities hello we we're talking oh, about God. you know certain cities certain areas you know you go in you are a basically a, a radio broadcaster and a receiver so you are receiving spontaneously all these clusters of inform all this energy that's pouring into your energy and it's all frequency it's bringing you down it's latching onto you and then you go home and you feel horrible. So think about that. So I do what I call energetic, um, um, oh my God, <laughs> um, um, it, like to flush out all the energy that you've accumulated on that day, whether you know it's there or not, just do it. So you can think about you can visualize a bright white light that's kind of pure, like a shower. You're taking a shower, but it's energetic. 
this pure white light has the ability to flush out anything that you've accumulated on that day that has a very low vibration that's not aligned with you. And you just bring it through your body very, very slowly from the head into your brain, into your throat, into your arms, you know, and you imagine you're flushing out all that stuff out through your feet and it's gone. If you did that it's five minutes, just five minutes at the end of the day before you go to sleep, and then you do it in the morning to prepare to bring that shield that you want to emit to the world. Simple, simple, simple things that can do a lot. Is it, I, don't, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Hawaii, but uh, I just remember getting off the plane in Maui and being hit by this wall of relaxation. I remember just like, mm. oh, God, you're like, <laughs> you can't. And I was coming from L.A. and you're like, you just can't. You can't move fast. Like it was at least on Maui. I'm not sure about Honolulu, but in Maui, you just felt like this wall of relaxation. And then you go over to New York and you, you, you go to Manhattan and you're just like, and you're like literally being lifted off the ground by the energy. Like I remember waking up and going 630 to go get some coffee. And it looked like it was noon. Like everybody was out. The cars were all running. It was just, it literally is a city that never sleeps. It's always moving. That energy was there and you could literally feel it. So places have energies as well. And, and, and it's, it's fascinating. That's why when you get to some place like Maui, that's why you relax or the Caribbean or one of these places that's just everybody else who lives there. It's just chilled. <laughs> yeah. I feel that in Palm Springs. Like when I get there, I just want to like slow down and do nothing. <laughs> I don't, so, but yeah, I mean, we're talking about this because this is our daily life and it is so important. This is a way for you to remember that you are emitting and you are receiving in your being all of this energy, this external energy, and it's changing you. So that's why, just like you brush your teeth every day, just like you take a shower every day, you, you know, it's an energetic cleanse, five minutes for you to reset. Wait a minute, why, why, is, why am I off? What am I feeling? Okay, you don't have to do a whole session just by you thinking about it, intending for it to happen to flush out whatever it is you go back to this zero point and then you start your day so I, I, so there was another thing that you did in your in your movie superhuman which i'm fascinated with and there's so much science behind this that it's scary um remote viewing mm. the, po <laughs> the power of remote viewing can you just tell the audience what re remote viewing is and then we're going to get slightly into the weeds of what and the science behind it and government agencies and all the things that remote yeah. viewing is doing and still doing to this day. So remote viewing is the ability to see at a distance, to pick up information at a distance. So I can see, let's say what you're doing in, in your home, even though I'm not there, for example, mm -hmm. sounds scary, but <laughs> it's mm -hmm. possible. And so what happened is that in the eighties, you know, we're still in a cold war, um the the russians were experimenting with that and they started to have some success so they were training soldiers to basically spy on us on the united states and of course we found out about it and we said wait a minute wait a minute we should we should be doing that <laughs> not just the russians so there was a whole program actually in the government that was created it's called the stargate program uh, basically to train soldiers to spy on the Russians. And uh, they actually were successful. A lot of the time they would uh, basically, of course it was for military purposes. So that, you know, to find out where the military bases were or the, you know, and so, but sometimes it was to pick up real, um, I mean, intelligence, like information when they were going to plan something or do something. And that information was brought to uh, some of the leaders, to Congress and to um, even Jimmy Carter at the time, because that was in the 80s. Um, and they actually, it affected policymaking uh, because of the accuracy of those predictions. So there's definitely something real about it. And so, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, um, many people who can do that. 
So it's not about spying on people. It's about picking up the information that is useful to you. By the way, you can also shield yourself. So if you don't want anybody to spy on you, but so this isn't about spying on your boyfriend to see if he's faithful, <laughs> you know, and speaking of that, you know, speaking again of on purposeful to be purposeful, you know, if you have set your intention to be here to, for the highest good and to be on higher purpose, you're not even going to be able to pick up information on silly things like that. You know what I mean? It would be, you could use it, for example, I am planning a trip, you know, I'm planning a trip. Is it going to be safe for me or is it going to be fun for me? You know, not because, I mean, I've gone to Maui sometimes and it wasn't such a great trip and I've gone other times when it was an amazing trip. So what is the difference? It's the same location. It's energy. It's the timing. It's the circumstances. There's all kinds of things that could happen that could interfere with your experience. So you can use these types of abilities to, to kind of sense what it's going, what your experience is going to be like. Uh, for example, working with someone, uh, signing a new contract with someone. So, I mean, very, very valuable tools. And I've heard of, of people doing remote viewing, not only presently, but also in the past, to the past and to the future. Some, some There's been remote viewing to find archaeological sites that no one could find. Even in Egypt, they had a scientist on who, who worked with remote viewing. I think his last name is Schwartz. Uh, and he, he went to the Egyptian Archaeology Society and said, we're going to do this. They're like, you're crazy. I'm like, we'll test this. And they went to the middle of the desert somewhere within two feet, found something that they'd been looking for forever. And they're like, whatever you need, sir, you can have what. And they, so finding, going there and going into the past to see what happens, but also going into the future. What's your experience with that? Yeah. So again, we're talking about consciousness, which is non-local. And so there is no time, there is no time space. There is no forward and back. It, it's just, it just is. And so what happens is that uh, you can also go to different places. You could go to the moon, remote view the moon, for example. But in terms of time, you can go back to an experience that already happened. But in terms of the future, it depends on the the how much the uh, momentum has been accumulated about a particular event so for example let's say if i if i want to look at one thing um uh let's say um am i going to um get married and have kids for example i mean it sounds silly but even on a bigger picture if is that going to happen so I mean, it depends on where I am. If I'm 14 years old right now or 17 or something, I may not see anything because technically, technically, I'm supposed to meet the person or whatever what, late in, in my life, for example. So my point being, I haven't accumulated enough momentum to see the final outcome that clearly. I will see a probability a possibility, but I will also, because speaking of going off the path, there are so many possible Variations. ways that you would go off the path before that one thing would happen, you see? Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why you may not have an accurate prediction when, when it's not enough momentum. But if I'm almost, um, you know, three years before I'm supposed to meet the person or whatever, I have already accumulated, I'm already on the path that is supposed to lead me there. There's very little probability that I'm going to change course at this point. So then I will be able to see very accurately that prediction. That so makes that makes perfect sense. So in other words, like if there's a, a, you know, a terrorist attack or a world war or something like that, the most things have been put in motion that it is likely that this is going exactly. to happen at, because there's so much exactly. happening for a world event. Let's say like a World War II, there was too many too many things moving that that was it's going to happen. Exactly. So someone could kind of say that. Yeah. So uh, so this is going to be a tough question. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to ask you here because as we're talking, it's interesting. You're saying uh, that consciousness is non-local. So you know, quote unquote, fifty years down the line, there's already probabilities of what's going to happen. 
50 years down the line, 100 years down the line. That's Depends on which down. area, but yeah. Generally speaking. Yeah. So are we right now on the needle in the record of consciousness? Meaning that this is the needle. This is what's recording or playing back at this moment. Is there a needle ahead of us? I mean, I know there was a needle behind us, but again, now we're going into past and future. But is this the needle um, or, or or we're going to get into the multiverse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but are you talking about are we going to make it or not? Well, no, that I, well, yeah, not that, but I'm just saying like, is this, is this the needle on the record? So are we the needle of the record? Is there another needle in front of us? Meaning that it's, is, is there another reality in front of us playing ahead? Or are we the ones who are like, this is the, this is, this is the show. The show is here and there's probabilities of the rest of the show and the show's already, that's gone behind us. So the, the song that's, the, the, there's songs that played behind us. There's probable songs that are going to play ahead of us. But on the neck, but we are the record needle on the record. Does that make yeah, sense? Or yeah, or maybe timeline, if you will. Time, or, time. I'm using a record. Yeah. I'm using yeah, a yeah. record as an analogy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think there's not just one needle or one timeline, but there's multiple timelines. Multiverse. <laughs> yeah. Multi, multi, multiple timeline happening at the same time. However, there are two main ones. One that is leading the earth to prosperity you know of course we can't see it right now because you can look around <laughs> you know so <laughs> just turn on the news and so but that path and that trajectory has already been set and we actually believe it or not we already made the turn we made the turn in that direction however mm -hmm. there are other p potential um, trajectories that are also uh, in parallel that are also coexisting, but they have a different speaking of momentum, they have a different momentum, some of it is not strong enough to to manifest, you know, and others are a little bit stronger so so the idea is on which timeline are you. This is where this is the juncture where we are right now. So I feel we've already made the turn. It's we're mm -hmm. not, you remember, how, remember like the whole 2012 thing where, right. you know, yeah. are we going to make it? We're not going to make it. It's the end it was of the 2000, world. It was 2000 first with Y2K and yeah, then 2012 yeah. and then 2016, yeah. I think was another one. And yeah. 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 So, so we've already, we already passed that. We've already made the choice actually quite recently. I want to say probably from, to, from 2020 that was the turn for me and so so i feel uh, this is my personal opinion that um this new trajectory uh, towards um prosperity i mean basically surviving all of this um is the strongest we can't see it right now we can't see it because it's 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 we just made the turn you know like you 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 you're in the turn <laughs> so you can't really see the end of the the new road if you will um, whereas the others, I feel one of them, which is the self-destructive one to me is the weakest, even though the outer reality, you think that's it, we're self-destructing, you know, between, you know, uh, global warming and look at the crime and hate and this and that it's horrible. That's probably what's happening. I don't believe that we are on the outside. That's how it looks. And then there's another trajectory that's kind of like somewhere in between where um basically this is moving off planet it doesn't mean that the planet self-destructs but it kind of continues in both places that's that's another momentum that's also being created so i don't know if that was was that your question it is it, yeah it, it, it is again not easy questions here on the show uh when you have someone like <laughs> yourself i love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i'm gonna ask you a few questions ask all my guests uh, what is your definition of living a good life? Being who you really are. What is your definition of, of God? Being who you really are. That's the definition of God. Okay. And, You're what true, is, and when I say who you really are, not just like being yourself in social setting. No, I'm talking being your true, true, original divine essence. And what is the ultimate purpose of life? Being who you really are. <laughs> and where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing and watch your films? So for consciousness work, just go to carolinecorey.com. 
uh, for the film that we've been talking about, Superhuman, go to superhumanfilm.com. And for other films, you know, my latest film is also very fascinating, I think, is A Tear in the Sky. Mm -hmm. uh, com. It's just uh, the topic is slightly different, but it brings science. And uh, of course, uh, we, just as a quick mention on the side, we think we found a wormhole. <laughs> we recorded a wormhole. So just as an FYI, it's super nice. fascinating. I mean, it's this is this is why I started the show is to have conversations like this about really deep and fascinating conversa conversations about every aspects of reality, of spirituality, of who we are, why we're here. These are large, large, massive questions that could we could talk about forever. But uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. It was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful conversation. Hopefully, it has helped a few people listening today. So I appreciate you, my dear. Thanks so much for having me. And, you know, I so appreciate you asking these questions because these are the questions we should be asking. We should be talking about this at this level. So I'm so, so, so grateful to you. Thank you so much. And you also, please keep up this work. I've been able to partner with Mind Valley to present you guys free master classes between 60 and 90 minutes covering mind, body, soul, relationships, and conscious entrepreneurship taught by spiritual masters, yogis, spiritual thought leaders, and best-selling authors. Just head over to nextlevelsoul.com forward slash free.